our exciting guest by the name of Miss Toby Blake, giving us three words to describe yourself. I'm going to say blessed and highly favored. That's what I'm going to say. Nice. Tell us why you're blessed and highly favored. I feel like I'm blessed and highly favored. Um, I think first and foremost, you know, I think for my own faith and because I believe in God, I just believe in that. Being a child of God, you're always going to be blessed and highly favored from that aspect. But I just feel also as well, especially from a business perspective and a personal perspective, I've always been kind of that person that's had that servant's heart. And having a servant's heart, you kind of, I feel, lead in a way that there is no other way that you cannot be blessed and highly favored, I guess, in a sense. You know what I mean? Because it's the only way that it's going to be really work and you're really going to have impact on people's lives. And that's what I want to do. Huge, huge, huge. So I always say your current situation does not determine your future destination, right? There's always room for improvement. There's always room for growth, right? Keep on striving. So in case your brain is telling you otherwise, you deserve to feel genuinely good in mind, body, and spirit. Why did that resonate with you? I think for me, really, it really, I think, I'm going to probably say a lot of it just has had to do with probably just how I have grown up. Like the different things that I've been exposed to, both good and bad, have really in my life have led me down a path where I've had to experience some really challenges, whether it be from a health perspective or not even only physical, but mental health as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I wasn't, I've been in three car accidents. Like my last car accident I had was 2019 and I ended up being off of work for almost like two years. And then, you know what I mean? All of that stuff obviously played into my mental health, right? And it still is because I have not still driven since my car accident of August of 2019. We're now in 2023. But I really- yeah, it, absolutely. Right. And it's it definitely has been a process. And, you know, I do what I need to do in regards to therapy. Um, you know, I've, I have to obviously take medication to help me too. But it, at the end of the day, if it really wasn't for my faith, I don't think I would continue to go because there's been some really, really dark days in that, Andre, where honestly, my work has saved me. Um, the people that I've worked with have saved me and just you know, understanding big picture of and remembering what God's plan is for me has continued to help me go. Amen. So you, based on that experience, like now where you are today, is there any like um, fruits of wisdom that you can instill upon somebody that might be going through what you went through at that time? Today, they're going through it. And what would you say to them if you could go back in time to yourself even? I could go back in time to myself. Um, I would definitely say that I did not, even though I thought I knew better, I didn't. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us as children, as we're growing up, especially in our teens, you know, we think we know best and we know everything. And I wish I would have, to some instances, listened to my grandmother more, listened to my parents more. Um, because really and truly now in retrospect, they really were trying to steer me wrong. Yeah, huge. And I think for me also as well, I wish I would have really established, and I think for everybody's journey, it's different, but I really wish that I had more in my household talked about, just have that option to talk more. Um, I think maybe as you will probably understand this, like I feel a lot of times, especially in Caribbean households, and it has to come down from a generational aspect too, is like you're the child and there's an adult. There's a very, very clear distinction of your role mm. as a child an adult in a caribbean household Absolutely. so if, you know what i'm saying so when you're told to do something there's no way uh, no <laughs> you know, it's, it's just do it like, when, you know what i mean and when they're asking you it's not even like well, what do you how soon do you need that done if you want to get the look of death if somebody's asking you in your household to do something i know my grandmother as soon as i heard miss ann I was like, yes, I was like, yes, grandma. And I was literally right there before she even could tell me what she needed me to do. Because you know you anticipation, but now, nowadays it's not like this no more. <laughs> like that, that, that's, that, another, that's another CAC. This, this, it's a, we're living in a different time. We're living in a different time, Audrey, different time. 
Wesley Jacko saying there, you know, normalized therapy, definitely, yeah. right? Um, these things are needed, though, to have these conversations and just express our inner thoughts and try yeah. to cultivate change within, you know, the new generation coming up, right? Absolutely, and it's not necessarily the most healthy lens at, at some times, too. So, yeah, I totally definitely agree with Wesley in regarding to like normalizing therapy and just being normalizing being able to speak like the freedom of speech is I don't think in the power of words is that probably that's the other thing too I would have to give advice to my younger self is not only from an aspect of how you speak to people but especially how you speak to yourself because mm -hmm. that can be very very damaging and it can be very very hard to reverse that I'm gonna quote another one of your quotables you deserve to speak up to be loud, to create room at the table and know that it belongs to you. Do you remember a time when you were sitting at the table and felt your voice leaving? Like a time when you had something of value to add to the conversation, but the words couldn't come out. Like right now, when I just asked you, when I just asked you. <laughs> yeah, there's probably so many times. I feel like, especially to as a woman of color, I feel even now, it's something that I, even at working for myself, is something that I still find very, very challenging um, being at the table because usually I'm the only person that looks like myself at that table. Whether it be from the aspect of a woman of color or just being in a room working with men, whether it be working for women, you know, it's, it's very hard sometimes to be in a position where somebody hires you to help them, but the way way that they're and maybe nobody's ever told them or maybe they feel like to themselves the way that they speak and the way that they engage and interact with people is you know not offensive but it will that totally shuts me down to mm -hmm. be honest in a sense that I'm a very sensitive person and the fact that I've learned a lot about myself over the last couple of years being an HSP and an empath it is very hard for me because I I take on a lot of energy from people when they're around me or not, but I know when something is going on. So when those type of things are going on around me, especially in a professional environment, I just completely shut down. But when I come back from that, because sometimes I don't, I have to walk away from something and process something and come back to it. But trust me, I always call it, I call, I have a saying and most people will know me, know what I use. It's called professional savagery. And mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you about that little secret right there. Because, listen, I don't have to go off on you, but trust me, if I have something to say, I might not say it in that moment, but I will be heard when I'm ready to be heard. And that's why I say professional savagery, because you won't even probably know to yourself that that is really me expressing to you. And the fact that you won't continue to treat me like that, you won't continue to talk to me like that. So I'm going to tell it to you in my own way. But there's no way you'll ever feel disrespected or feel like any less. But that is one of my biggest lessons that I've learned professional savagery. We'll call it that. That's what I call it. So when people, when I don't feel like I can be spoke, like speak up at the table right away, sometimes I've gotten better now because I realize now, especially too, like it's only in the last year that I have made my business my 100% dedication and this is what I'm doing. I don't have time to play around and play games. Like, it is what it is. And if I don't step up for myself, nobody's going to the table for me, Andre. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I have Absolutely. to go for myself. I definitely have learned a lot. It, it, it was not easy and it was, it was a journey. Like, for me, I had never even planned on working for myself. I always thought I was going to be at my little cubicle doing my little admin thing, working for people, making them their money, doing whatever they told me. That's what I thought my life was going to be until I feel like God put that calling on my heart. The last year definitely has not, like even the last three years for me overall, has it been very easy? To, and I'm actually even surprised I'm running my business on my own 100%. Um, it's definitely been a fight, but you know, my I just recently launched a service, um, and that whole service that I launched is really based on everything that I've gone through in the last three years, and that's like no word of a lie. Like, it was really, really taught me, and this recharger operations is kind of like 
not only your business, but recharge your life, whatever you have to do, that you're not sitting behind a desk 18 to 20 hours a day. I don't care how much you love your job. You need to love life more. And the reason why I say that is because like the last, last three years, I'm going to kind of just give you a rundown snapshot. 2019, I lost my godfather in July. No. Then August, I, I, I lost my godfather in July. Then I came back from, had to go to Florida, plan his whole funeral, do all of that, right? Come mm -hmm. back in August, I got into the accident, Andre. I didn't wow. know being off for a whole year and a half. In between that, as everybody knows, we were locked down because of pandemic, mm -hmm. right? Then in between the pandemic, my mom got cancer, okay? Wow. Then my brother got into a car accident, almost died. Then my dad had his own share he went through has his own mental health issues i have to go back home and deal with that then wow. right mom goes into remission i go there um and whatever reason it was just constant like i had to be there for her birthday in 2021 so mm -hmm. i made sure it's her birthday my mom turned 74 i lost my mom in october of 2021 oh boy and all of that i kept going because I don't know, I had no choice, I felt, but that's what I'm telling you, like where I am today is only by the grace of God, that's why I'm here and why I do what I do. That's why me working for myself 100% now, if I do not feel the energy to work with somebody, I'm not going to work with them. And especially if it's going to take away from, I feel like I've lost so much time because of the days where there was times that I spent 18, 20 hours away from my daughter just to be able to put food in her mouth and do all these different things because I didn't have the support and help. Life is so short, Andre. It's so short. And I never, yeah. never saw that I have not have my mom. Yeah, and let me tell you something. I think the biggest thing that I learned, I learned, and somebody might disagree with this, but the worst thing that I've ever heard somebody tell me and I, as I said, I've lost people. Like, you know, I've lost my grandmother that raised me and all of these things. But the one thing that I have totally despised people telling me is that time will heal how I feel. It mm -hmm. will never, never heal how I feel. Yeah, it goes back to what I just said there. And that's the hardest part, though, too, because when there's a loved one lost, it's like people try to find the words and those words could be destructive to, to the receiver, right? But it's like, we're, we're left with what do you say in this instance, right? So, you know, again, yeah, like, know only God are... knows the pain that you're feeling there. And, you know, and I don't really like I get emotional and a lot of people, there's some people on here that know me like Jeff is on here. Um, yes. Cindy, I'm just, to be working with her doing something about this but my last service offering as i said has come solely from what i've experienced for the last three years because if i can have somebody be in a position to have the opportunity to spend quality time with those people that they love and not be distracted and it might sound so petty and it might seem so small but when you lose somebody andre and i know you understand on this there's you can't go back you can't go back and say i remember i wish i would have did this i wish i would have done that it, it doesn't matter. there's it doesn't no matter. redos right it's no. one shot that's it shout outs to jeff yes saying tovi is telling the truth and he is a witness right so definitely um what you're basically telling is that you you are working out ways to help entrepreneurs so that they don't have to spend so much time in their business rather that they can work on their business and have it being able to work for themselves while they are able to spend that quality time with loved ones. Because yes, that slippery slope of entrepreneurship is a never ending gig, right? The work is Absolutely. never done. Even when you pack it up for the day, there's still things that need to be done. A lot of people are trying to navigate their purpose, right? And they're not sure where they fit, right? How did you push through the nervousness around stepping into your purpose instead of doing something that's safe? Hmm. You know what? I honestly feel like 
for me, my, my biggest motivator has been my daughter. And I think mm. the reason why I say that is because of the fact that when you come from things from a generational aspect, like my um, parents, for example, mm. you know, my dad ended up being a welder. My mom ended up, you know, being a hairdresser. So they both ended up in kind of trades. So they never went to college or university or any of those things. So there's certain things I think as any parent or any type of guardian, you want that child to have better. And I think as I grew older, I, and especially when my daughter went to university and I started working for myself, my biggest thing I've ever told my daughter now is that go and work and do your little thing, but your ultimate goal should be to work for yourself mm. and make your yeah. live your own life and do your own thing. And so for me, that has been my biggest motivator is probably her because I want her to set apart, be set apart from doing things even how I've done them. I want her to learn earlier. If she can work for herself earlier and do all of that stuff, I'm very much right now on this. I'm about, I just registered late last year. I have one of my friends were creating a nonprofit called Women Building Legacies. I'm very focused on that. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's another thing. Because that was one of the things when I started my Above All With Men, I already knew that it was really a means to the, an end of yeah. where my purpose really is about leaving legacy. And that's yes. really what I'm focused on doing. And, and everything that I do is ultimately going to lead back to that. And legacy to me is a, it's not about money. When I'm talking about legacy, that is not what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about legacy, I'm talking about what do you want the world to remember you for? What is something that you can leave the world that can pass down from somebody that's not related to you, related to you, whatever the case may be? That is what I'm talking about, legacy. What can we do to make this world a better place? Where is your most favorite place in your home? Where is my most favorite place in my home? My yes. office. There you go where the work gets done, where the thinking cap goes on and the long midnight oil gets burnt. 